This hour of the Costa Report is brought to you by Dole Food Company, the world's leading producer and distributor of fresh fruits and vegetables. Welcome to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and thank you for joining me for another two hours of Straight Talk Radio. I want to welcome members of our military who are joining us from remote outposts over the Internet today. And listeners tuning in from coast to coast in all 50 states, thank you for making us part of your news week. In just a moment, former United States Secretary of Health and Human Services, who is credited with successfully shepherding the Affordable Care Act through a divided Congress, Ms. Kathleen Sebelius, will be joining us to talk about reforms and improvements to ACA on which both Republicans and Democrats might agree and be able to build on. As Ryan and the White House get ready to take another run at health care reform, are there provisions in the new bill which are clearly needed? Uh, We'll find out during the next hour from a woman who is not only one of the most knowledgeable experts on Obamacare, but who is also widely respected for her bipartisan approach. But before Secretary Sebelius joins us, as is my custom each week, let me tell you a little about her background. Kathleen Gilligan was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. She earned her undergraduate degree from Trinity Washington University and master's degree from the University of Kansas. From 1977 to 86, Sibelius was the executive director of the Kansas Trial Lawyers Association. Then in 86, she entered politics as a member of the Kansas House of Representatives, where she served for eight years. In 1994, Sibelius became the Kansas Insurance Commissioner, preparing her to become the governor of Kansas by 2002. Seven years later, she was asked to join the Obama administration to head up the Department of Health and Human Services, where she oversaw a trillion-dollar budget, approximately 90,000 employees, and was the driving force behind getting the Affordable Care Act approved and off and running. By the time Sebelius stepped down from her post, nearly 8 million Americans had enrolled through health care exchanges. Yet in spite of being largely responsible for the bill being signed into law, Sebelius is remarkably objective about the weaknesses of ACA and where more work is needed. Today, Sibelius is the CEO of Sibelius Resources, a strategic consulting firm. It's my pleasure to welcome to the Costa Report one of the country's foremost experts on health care policy and insurance, Ms. Kathleen Sibelius. Thank you for joining us, Ms. Sibelius. Nice to be with you, Rebecca. I think we are often misled by jargon, uh, by words like repeal and replace, because These words imply that a a new plan will not have some of the same elements of the previous plan, which is not likely to be the case. So I thought maybe we could first focus on some of the areas where the Affordable Care Act can be improved and where the new administration might be able to get more broad-based congressional support. So let's start with the proposed patient and state stability fund. Could you could you explain to us in layman's terms what the stability fund is and why it's an idea which both Republicans and Democrats might be able to get behind? Well, I think that... Um You're absolutely right. There are some uh, features that are likely to continue to reappear, and I hope we can get beyond the slogans and into, you know, where there's some common ground on policies. So the goal of the Affordable Care Act was to allow people who were buying insurance on their own because they didn't have affordable coverage in their workplace or they had no coverage at all. They might be working two or three part-time jobs, but had no insurance benefits or they didn't qualify for one of the public programs. So that's always been Rebecca, a pretty small slice of the market, eight or 9 million people. And they kind of churn in and out. You may have a job with Ford motor company and then start your own business. Well, when you start your own business, you're suddenly out of the Ford motor company plan. Or you may graduate from college and decide that uh, you want to go to graduate school, and at that point you might be out of, you know, an insurance plan. So there are times in your life where 
Um, you may be needing to buy insurance on your own, or some people are just going to be in small operations, mom and pop shops, always there. So that was really the focus target. And you have to then say, okay, what, what do employee plans look like that make it easier for people to afford coverage? And one of the things is having some sort of a risk pool where everybody at Ford Motor Company is in the plan. You have a benefit package that suits both people who are sick and people who are well. Some people have had a heart attack and come back to work. Some people are pretty healthy and never have any illness, but the package of benefits is really for everybody, men and women, sick and healthy. And then you have um, a way to uh, make sure that there's, there's a bit of balance. So in the individual market, that isn't the case. People were always medically underwritten, which means that insurance companies could literally ask for my health record, look at my health situation, and decide maybe they didn't want to sell me insurance at all. Uh, maybe they would sell me insurance but eliminate anything that had to do with some kind of pre-existing health condition. Uh, or if I was healthier uh, than some, I could get a really good deal and a really good policy, but that was based entirely on my own health. And when I got sick, I was kind of out of luck once again. Right. So they were looking what? at individual risk. Each individual, they would take a risk assessment as opposed to a pool where you have some That's sick right. and some healthy people That's and they balance it out. That's absolutely right. Previously, if you were out of luck and you weren't part of a larger pool, like an employ employee's uh, insurance program, right, or some group insurance right. program, you right. were being and individually assessed uh, in terms of your risk. Correct. And that's really what pre-existing condition means, that, you know, the insurance companies were totally within the law of saying, you know, we don't want you at all if you've been too sick or we will only cover certain elements, but eliminate anything that has to do with your heart or has to do with your bad knees because we don't want to take that risk. So the goal always of uh, putting the Affordable Care Act together and the marketplaces together, we're kind of creating a virtual pool. Individuals suddenly were kind of joined together, even if they didn't work side by side, they were entering a pooled market. And insurance companies on a state by state basis would sell individual policies, but sell them basically with the same rules that have always been in place for group policies. Sure. We're so gonna... what we're talking about is we're instead of each individual being assessed, we were talking Correct. about making a pretend pool and putting the people right. in that were that were individually assessed putting into a, one big a, group so that they would be treated like an, an employee program. You're absolutely right. Putting people in a virtual pool. You and I are in a we're not sitting in a studio together, but we're having a conversation. We're, we're having a virtual conversation. A, you bet. Uh, now, unfortunately, we've got to take, pool. yeah, we've got to take one of those virtual <laughs> breaks uh, okay. to satisfy you, to satisfy our sponsors. But stay where you are. We'll be right back with more from Kathleen Sebelius. You're listening to the Costa Report. Hey America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food in our country than we know what to do with. Food at the grocery store and food in the vending machines, fast food, health food, and seafood. We've got so much food that anything people don't buy, we just psh, throw out. Yet 17 million kids in America struggle with hunger. That ain't right. Luckily, the Feeding America Nationwide Network of Food Banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Yeah, I made that up. It's kind of catchy. Hello, people. This isn't rocket science. We could solve hunger today. To start, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. That's a website. Duh. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council.
Are you or someone you know suffering from a complex medical issue, seen multiple doctors, specialists, and had extensive testing done with still no answers? You're not alone. One-third of U.S. families have suffered from an unresolved medical condition after seeing two or more physicians. CrowdMed can help. CrowdMed streamlines the healthcare process, saving patients time and money and unnecessary hospital visits and irrelevant procedures, helping them get back to health faster. CrowdMed's secret to success is a network of doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals who collaborate with their unique sets of medical expertise to solve these complex cases faster. CrowdMed works in conjunction with the healthcare system, providing patients with medically sound information that's validated and confirmed by a licensed physician. CrowdMed has achieved a 75% success rate, producing a correct diagnosis in an average of just two to three months. To see how CrowdMed can help you or someone you love, go to CrowdMed.com today. That's CrowdMed.com. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. To get your free inventor's information, call 1-800-350-9514. That's 1-800-350-9514. Again, 1-800-350-9514. Listen to people just like you who found pride in service to their community as a member of their local Lions Club. Hi, I'm Lion Bob Younger with Sunnyvale Host Lions. I ran across a lady whose mom lived in Florida and needed hearing aids. I called the district governor in Florida and her mom got hearing aids. Hi, my name is Julie Bach, and I'm the president of James Lick High School's Leo Club. We went down to downtown San Jose, and we helped the affected families remove the items that need to get thrown out due to the flood, and we were really happy to help them. My name is Mark Ariano. I'm the president of the Marina Lions Club. Recently, we helped with the Sobrantes fire relief efforts down in the Big Sur area. We were able to help feed, clothe, and house a lot of people. Become a lion and and serve with pride. Find your pride and lots of really good friends at go.centralcoastlions.com. That's go.centralcoastlions.com. Hey, buddy, it's me, your laptop. That's right, your little modern marvel of technology you've been abusing for months. Dude, we need to talk. Do you really think that those free PC fix-it programs are any match for today's spyware and malware? Not to mention the NSA and some of those websites you've been visiting. Now, I'm not here to judge. I'm just saying. You need to take me to Peter and the friendly staff at User-Friendly Computing to get me back into tip-top shape. Tired of unfriendly computer support? Slow computer? Viruses? Spyware? No problem. Call the friendly computer experts at User-Friendly Computing. We take care of all your PC, Macintosh, and laptop needs. Mention KSCO and get a free $50 diagnostic. Visit us today at 505 River Street on the way to downtown Santa Cruz, across from Gateway Plaza. We give you a choice. Drop your computer by the shop, or we'll come to you. Call us today at 423-9653. User-Friendly Computing. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and my guest today is the former governor of Kansas and secretary of Health and Human Services in the Obama administration, Ms. Kathleen Sebelius. And before the break, we were talking about the original intention of the Affordable Care Act, which was to offer individuals who did not have or could not get coverage, insurance coverage, the the same advantages that shared risk pools have by putting individuals into one big virtual pool that could negotiate as one large group. And I wanted to offer you an opportunity to finish your thoughts before we went to break there. Sure. Well, I just, um, I was trying to answer the question about what about the stabilization fund, or I can't exactly remember what 
the new title is that is in the Republican bill. Yeah, I think but they the call it this is, Patient and State Stability okay. Fund. And it seems Stability to be fund. one of those one of those aspects of the new proposal that Republicans and Democrats ought to be able to agree on. I'm I'm trying to focus on a few elements that they might be able to build some consensus on. Well, I I would certainly agree. Uh, the the original bill had um a form of risk pooling. It recognized that these markets are new uh, in every state. Insurance companies didn't know who was going to sign up and who didn't. A lot of them had never actually sold policies in the individual market before. They sold health insurance, but not necessarily in this market. So the original bill had kind of a three-year pool of money that basically said to insurance companies, if you end up with more sick people on average than healthy people and more than your competitors have, we want to kind of balance the risk for the first couple of years. We don't want anybody to be driven out of the market because um, people sign up in different ways. And so we recognize that Uh, there should be some help to pay for the really sick people who are going to be coming in. You know, if you get three liver transplants in your Connecticut pool and somebody else has, you know, 75, 26-year-olds, that's not an even balance. So that was uh, in the original bill. Frankly, the Republican Congress didn't like it at all. They didn't fund it. Um, starting with year two, they refused to apply any resources. I think it's one of the reasons that some of the companies, frankly, pulled out of the market because they thought they knew what the rules were. The rules changed. So this is a uh, it this is the same kind of idea. We need to stabilize these new markets. We need to say to insurance companies, uh, we will help with a you know kind of extra stability fund on a state by state basis uh, for balancing that risk for the first number of years that you're willing to participate. I think it's a good idea. I've always thought it was part of Medicare Part D when that uh, benefit was added to the Medicare plan. It's typically part of an insurance scheme where you have, you know, you recognize that the first couple of years, nobody has a trend line. Nobody knows exactly what the risk is going to look like. So you, you have a shared pool of balanced funds and you want competition in the marketplace. So I, um, I do think it makes sense. I thought it made sense when it was in the original plan. I think it, it still might make sense uh, to put it in a new plan. Right. Well, I I think you make a good point. Whenever you launch any kind of new program, you have no track record and you don't know how long it's going to take to get the exact right mix that makes sense for insurance companies of people that are sick and also people that are healthy. Right. So, you know, we've been talking about, well, what, what would that mix look like? And obviously it took a long, longer time to get younger, healthier people enrolled because most of the people that initially signed up uh, did have health issues or couldn't get insurance or, you know, were looking to get treatments of some sort. But now, as I understand it, about a third of the enrollees are under the age of 35. Is that right? That's right. What uh, what I saw, Rebecca, is that the numbers from the last open enrollment period, which ended in November, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, it ended in January. It looked like it was close to 38 percent. of Yeah. The so we've got almost 40 percent now that are younger, yeah. healthier people that have have. But and, but that didn't happen overnight. That took a while. That's right. That's right. And that's that's why the risk pool. And again, some states are doing terrifically well. In states where there has been active participation by companies, in a lot of the states, frankly, where the governors expanded Medicaid so that you have companies used to writing Medicaid programs and they they write the marketplace programs too, there's a lot of competition. There is a lot of participation in other states and in some rural parts of even uh, bigger urban states, there still are too few companies uh, writing policies, which means that when you don't have competition, you have a monopoly. 
and monopolies tend to make the prices go up. Uh, so we need more companies in the market, and this is one of the ways to uh, put some rules in place and tell companies that we want them to, to participate. We know that competition is a better rate regulator than any kind of government intervention, um, but you you got to give them some stability for the first couple of years. Well, in a way, uh, it's it's like an insurance plan for insurance companies. It's a safety net. Right. It basically says if we don't get the mix of healthy and ill uh, right away, uh, we're going to uh, supplement that for a period of time until the mix is right. And, uh, you know, and it, 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 that takes time with any new government program. And that's what stabilizes it is by providing that safety net. That's right. And it also says the reality is that there are some individuals who are very, very expensive patients. And if a company ends up writing a policy for one of those individuals, they are going to need some extra help. If you have a, you know, a, a, as I say, a transplant patient, if you have a child who is a hemophiliac who needs very expensive and continuous treatment. I mean, there are some categories where a limited number of people spend a lot of money and it's life and death money. It's very important that they have full insurance coverage, that they be in a pool, but having some additional help for those very expensive patients, I think is also a really good idea. Well, sure, because if you get somebody who really has a serious and very expensive treatment uh, ahead of them, you may need 10, 20, 50 healthy people to be paying premiums to offset those costs. And you may not get them into the pool right away. That's right. That's so right. You, you so got to have some way to balance. reimburse these insurance companies or, you know, what what incentive did they have? And so this is kind of a floor for the ceiling companies and it would offset some of their risk. Uh, I I don't know. You know, I'm from Silicon Valley. I would just call this a startup cost. <laughs> but <laughs> well, I, I think, nobody doesn't I mean, like that. No one likes that language in the government. But you know, what? Well, how about no, some just like regular old language. startup costs? Yeah, I mean that's really what it's about, and it's a recognition that this is a new market. You know, there was a lot of talk about the premium increases in 2017 and no question a number of companies did adjust their premiums first of all most consumers didn't pay those adjustments because their subsidies went up with the adjustments That's but right. also it was they finally had three years of trend lines they knew what they were insuring yeah we're gonna have to talk about that on the other side of this break we'll come right back and talk about those raised premiums you're listening to the costa report Men, if you're like me, you appreciate the feeling of a clean, smooth shave from a quality blade. The sort of shave that cuts clean without the burn. So why are you messing around with generic razors that cost 32 bucks for an 8-pack when you can shave with Harry's high-quality German-engineered blades for half the price? And because Harry's is so confident in the quality of their blades, they'll send you their most popular set, Complete with a razor, one of their world-famous blades, shaving cream, and post-shave balm for free if you cover shipping. A total value of $20 at no cost to you, with code 1170 at checkout. Their way of saying thank you for trying them. How is Harry's able to save you all this money and still give you the best shave you'll ever enjoy? By owning the factory that manufactures the blades. That's how. Go to harrys.com now and enter code 1170 at checkout to claim your free trial set and post-shave balm. That's harrys.com, code 1170. Hi, I'm Captain Dave Michaels. And this is Ben Picard. Here aboard Flight 1080, we want to give you the most accurate traffic reports. And while we're at it, we'll cover national headlines, local headlines, play some great music, and cover the issues that matter to you. And that is why we have to get into this hot air balloon and leave right now. But you can listen from the safety of your home or in your car with your radio, computer, or smartphone. That's 1080 AM on your radio dial or 24 hours a day, seven days a week at KSEO.com. Wish us luck. Hi, Registered Pharmacist Ben Fuchs here. I've been studying healthy bodies for 35 years, and what I've got to tell you may shock and surprise you, but if you listen up, 
it may change your life. We humans are proud of our brains and our ability to think and be aware. We even named ourselves Homo sapiens, meaning man who is wise. But humans are emotional creatures too, and while we've been taught that the brain controls the actions of the body and its organs, what's a lot less appreciated is the impact the organs have on the activity of the brain. This relationship is especially significant when it comes to the heart, and while there's an obvious connection between what we think in our heads and what happens in the heart, as it turns out, coronary signaling to the brain is just as extensive as the other way around. The heart is the seat of our emotions, and when we're angry or depressed, heart messages to the brain are chaotic and disorganized. This results in an inhibitory effect on higher cognitive functions, suppressing our ability to learn, reason, and remember and make good decisions. What's more, because the link goes in two directions, the heart's input to the brain when we're under emotional duress also returns back to the heart, ultimately impacting cardiac health and the wellness of the entire circulatory system. If you have a history of heart disease or you want to prevent it, working with thoughts and emotions can be an effective cardio health strategy. Simply recall a time when you felt really happy and content and bring that feeling back to your mind and body. You'll know you're getting heart health benefits when your breathing slows down and deepens. And when the heart signals calmly back to the brain, you'll be thinking more clearly, making better choices, and improving brain health at the same time. Pharmacist Ben here urging you to go to kscohealth.com to order Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the Healthy Start Pack, and other nutritional supplements that I personally use and recommend. You can purchase these premium quality products at wholesale prices online at kscohealth.com. That's kscohealth.com. I'm the pharmacist that believes that staying healthy and strong is not only about medicine, it's about giving your body the raw materials it needs to do its work. Go to kscohealth.com. Make sure you check out the cool videos too at kscohealth.com that's kscohealth.com it's always open house at the mike young real estate hour and you are always invited to walk right in and join the discussion hello i am mike young and i love talking real estate with all the experts and with you so get a jump on the real estate weekend every friday 7 p.m on the mike young real estate hour right here on listen and be heard radio ksco the mike young real estate hour is brought to you by thunderbird real estate real people selling real estate by rick williams at american pacific mortgage and by steve manville at farmers insurance friday at seven see you then Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and if you're just joining us, my guest today is Kathleen Sebelius. And just before we went to break, you were starting to address the rise in premiums, which some people experienced. Sure. Um, This law basically went into effect in 2014 for uh, most of the country, although Young people could get on their parents' plan before that, and there were some changes uh, in the marketplace. But basically, the exchanges started and Medicaid expansion started in January 2014. So companies, after a couple of years, knew uh, a little more than they did going in in 2014. They knew uh, what their risk pool looked like. They knew who had signed up and who was likely to sign up. In the future, they knew about what their expenses look like. So in 2017, a number of them did file for increased rates. And that was suggested that it was, I think, a a part of the the whole marketplace falling apart. I used to be an insurance commissioner and spent a lot of time looking at markets. And actually, I thought it was um, a really appropriate time for just that to happen. They finally had enough of a trend line, knew enough about what they were doing to say, okay, we need, we need to adjust these rates. And for most of the consumers in the marketplace, their subsidies uh, went up along with the rate adjustment. So they did not pay an increase, but the company said in order to keep in this market, in order to do business, you know, we, we bid too low or some of us didn't, actually priced our products the right way uh, and made an adjustment to the rates. Um, Again, I think what's going on now makes it very confusing about how they move forward because companies, I think, and I've talked to a number of the CEOs who have been participating, um, say, we don't know what the rules are. You know, we thought we knew what the rules were, so we adjusted our rates. We were in uh, 
making sure that people had insurance for the long run, and now everything's up in the air again. We don't know if this is going to well, be the law. We don't you know, know. You know how that goes. It. New sheriff, new I, rules. <laughs> I, I got it. And, and just about the time I, everybody gets their hands around uh, some concrete data and feels like they know how to price things and what to expect, uh, the rules will change. And, you know, we live in a dynamic society. That's what technology's done for us. And, you know, it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to keep up. But you've also suggested that there's a need for income levels to be adjusted to tax incentives and financial help because there's still a number of people who are just over the cutoff line and they can't afford right. insurance. Isn't that right? Well, yes. If you're, again, buying your own coverage, what you don't have is an employer paying a share of your insurance plan. So That's a lot right. of people in at work, their employer may pick up 50%, 60%, 70% of the cost. These folks are all paying 100% out of pocket. So again, the original bill said, you know, for people who are up to this income level, there'll be a progressive help as if, you know, you were in an employer plan, will help you purchase that coverage. There's a sharp cutoff. You're either, um, getting some help or getting zero help. And what I've heard from way too many people is, you know, they're just over that line. They're just beyond it. And, and they're still finding a hundred percent of the cost of the plan too much out of pocket. So I think there's a way to really relook at those income levels and yeah, maybe stair out, step that and make it a little bet, bit more gradual. Yeah. Instead of and such have a, a slide upward to make yeah, sure. Yeah. I people, think because a, the goal a, is coverage. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you, you, they could create a sliding scale without too much difficulty. That doesn't. That certainly seems doable and ought to be some, you know, a part of the the new plan. And again, you know, my my goal today in talking is to find things that maybe the Republicans and the Democrats could agree on in terms of the new program, because the new program obviously is going to have a lot of the elements of the previous program, but it's also an opportunity to improve on the on the previous program and uh you know we well, just want to be sure that there's things that can have you know that we that that congress focuses on those things that can have more broad-based support and and that was really the purpose of talking today unfortunately we're just about out of time so let me take this opportunity to thank you for uh, taking time to speak with us today and also for your service to our country thank you miss sebelius appreciate it well i appreciate it rebecca and thanks for having me our topic today has been the future of health care, and we've been talking about the really big picture. But let's take a moment to talk about where health really starts. It, it begins with taking care of ourselves by paying attention to what we eat and how we feel and how we move around. And that's one of many reasons I want you to take a moment to try the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country, Blue Apron. Their seafood is sustainably sourced. Their beef, chicken, and pork comes from responsibly raised animals, and Blue Apron's produce comes from farms that practice regenerative farming. And when you get your box of fresh ingredients and simple, easy-to-use recipes from Blue Apron, not only are you in for a meal you'd expect to eat in a gourmet restaurant, you'll pay less than $10 a person for all that goodness and do the planet a good turn at the same time. When I tell you that after one meal... You will be doing what I'm doing and telling all your friends about Blue Apron. I'm talking about choosing from meals like spinach and fresh mozzarella pizza with olives, bell peppers, and ricotta salad. Or sweet and sour salmon with bok choy, carrot, and ginger fried rice. Oh, that carrot and ginger fried rice is just a killer. You got to, you got to order that. Or how about parmesan-crusted chicken with creamy fettuccine and roasted broccoli? convenience, health, affordability, and variety. You get it all with Blue Apron. And right now, listeners of the Costa Report can get three free meals with their first order. And that includes free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash Costa. Get the Costa in there, C-O-S-T-A. That's blueapron.com slash Costa. Make sure you add that slash Costa so you get the three free meals with the free shipping. Do what I do to stay healthy. Eat like a queen for under $10 a person. 
It doesn't get any better than that. Check out blueapron.com slash Costa. And then do me a favor. Snap a picture of your Blue Apron creation. You know, I, I get my whole family in there. I get my kids in. We all open the box up together. And we look at the recipe. And my kids join me in the kitchen. And we cook together. And that's part of the fun. You know, one of us is reading, the youngest is reading the recipe. The rest of us are are buzzing around. Uh, and, uh, you know, mom has got a glass of wine in her hand, <laughs> mostly supervising. <laughs> but I will tell you, it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to get the whole family together. So take a picture of your Blue Apron creation and send it to me. I can't wait to hear about your Blue Apron experience. Blue Apron is a better way to cook. And now that I have succeeded in making myself very hungry, (laughs) uh, we're going to take a little break. And when we return, I'll tell you what I think about the Affordable Care Act and the proposed GOP replacement plan. You know that uh, that Paul Ryan and the Trump administration are going to take another hard run at this. And uh, that is a good thing. Because no matter how many runs they take, I will tell you that there are elements of the new program on which they can get broad-based support from both Republicans and Democrats, al- Democrats alike. And, uh, and I'd like to see them identify what those elements are and maybe make that phase one. Let's, let's, get, let's get some Democratic support here for the new changes in health care. I think that's going to be a really, really important aspect of uh, of of success. You know, uh, I find that in negotiations, the best way to do it is find the common ground and decide that you can move forward on those parts of the legislation that everyone can agree on. And then start introducing the things that maybe people need to have uh, more talk, more discussion, more compromise on. When we come back, I'm going to tell you what I think about the ACA and the new replacement plan. So stay tuned. You're listening to The Costa Report. Rhonda knows what it's like to mourn. Last year, our family lost three parents in a 10-month span. First, her father-in-law passed away. We didn't realize how sick he was, and it just hit all of a sudden. Then, her mother-in-law passed unexpectedly. And this woman was very healthy. She walked every day. You would have never known that she was sick. Then, Rhonda lost one of her parents. My father was diagnosed with cancer in June, liver cancer, and then he died in August. With so much loss so quickly, Rhonda did struggle, but there was something or someone who gave her the strength she needed. It was hard, and if we hadn't had Christ, we couldn't have made it. Faith in Jesus Christ will help you walk through anything in this life and offer you unimaginable joy in the next. What's your part? Trust Him completely. Learn more at BillyGraham.org. Click on Grow Your Faith, BillyGraham.org. I'm here today with Scott Caraccioli of Caraccioli Cellars, recent winners of the best sparkling wine in the U.S. in the Champagne and Sparkling Wine World Championship. Congratulations, Scott. Thank you, Rebecca. Thanks for having me. So what is it about your Brut Cuvée that beat all the other competitors around the world? We really focus on creating an expression of the Santa Lucia Highlands and doing it the right way. And when you control the process from the beginning to the end and you have talent like Michelle and top-tier grapes, they really shine through. This was a worldwide competition. It was definitely a humbling experience. We were in a room with producers that have been making wine for over 100, 200 years and was a huge honor to have Tom Stevenson give us the best Best sparkling wine award we fared really well overall we had three wines win best of class which was great visit the caraccioli tasting room on dolores street in carmel by the sea or find us online at caracciolicellars.com or reach us by phone 831-622-7722 
Hey guys, pardon the advertising interruption to your radio program. Do yourself a favor and please listen carefully. If you have tried or wanted to try Viagra or other male prescriptions in the last few years, you need to hear about Noxitril, the super pill that will transform your sex life forever. You see, Noxitril has been formulated and developed in U.S. FDA labs, and it's the real deal. Noxitril works, period. Strong, explosive results that increase blood flow fast. And best of all, there are no side effects like prescription meds. After you years of research, the developers of Noxitril got it right. This remarkable pill is off the charts. Right now, we encourage you to take advantage of our incredible free bottle offer. So what are you waiting for? Noxitril. It's that good. Call now and find out how to get a free bottle of Noxitril while supplies last. Call 1-800-480-5681. That's 800-480-5681. Free bottles for a limited time, so call now. 800-480-5681. 800-480-5681. When you think of local, I want you to think of quality health care where you live. Think of local primary care physicians, local specialists, and local patient care coordinators. From Boulder Creek to Watsonville, Physicians Medical Group provides care from 100 locations throughout Santa Cruz County. PMG's patient care coordinators are the team you call when you need answers. To learn more about local health care with Physicians Medical Group, visit pmgscc.com or call 831-465-7800. Ed Robertson inviting you to join us for the next edition of TV Confidential. Sunday morning from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. here on KSCO AM 1080 in Santa Cruz. Our guests will include Adam Michael James, author of The Bewitched Compendium, a fun book that takes a look at continuity issues within the Bewitched universe. That's TV Confidential every Sunday morning from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. on AM 1080 KSCO. Listen and be heard. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and if you're just joining us, we've been speaking with the former Secretary of Health and Human Services under President Obama and former Governor of Kansas, Kathleen Sebelius. As Secretary of Health and Human Services, Sebelius was not only in charge of a $1 trillion budget, that's with a T, she oversaw all Medicare and Medicaid services, the National Institute of Health, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the Food and Drug Administration, the Office of the Surgeon General, the Office of Head Start, and a dozen other offices. And she was also the bipartisan negotiator President Obama needed to get a divided Congress to put through the Affordable Care Act. Now, as you'll recall, Sebelius got off to a rough start when the ACA website crashed and uh, clearly the actual implementation of ACA was rushed. And as a result, when the day came for millions of Americans to register, well, they, they couldn't get on and the system crashed. And, and, and that brings me to a point that I seem to be making a lot these days. When it comes to developing and implementing solutions to very complex problems, it would not hurt us to slow our roll. I realize there's tremendous pressure for our new president to demonstrate that he was and is serious about the campaign promises that he made to the American people. Above all things, President Trump is a man of action. His successful track record in business depended on getting results. So from this perspective, the president expects to see a Republican majority in the House and Senate act swiftly to put through the initiatives the American people voted for when they elected him. But when it comes to issues such as a national health care program or dealing with China's neighbor, North Korea, tax reform, the Middle East, other highly complex issues, speed is not necessarily our friend. That's because each of these challenges are likely to produce unintended consequences many, many decades down the road. Consequences similar to the issues that we're presently dealing with when it comes to Social Security. Now, on the surface, Social Security once sounded like a great idea, great plan. The year was 1935, and more than half of our country's elderly were living in squalor and poverty. The stock market crash of 1929 had devastated their retirement savings, and there was nowhere for older Americans to go. 
Franklin Roosevelt realized some kind of social insurance was necessary to pull the country out of the long-term repercussions of the Great Depression. And so during his first term in office, as soon as he could, he had the Social Security Act passed as part of the New Deal. Now, it's important to keep in mind, we didn't have any of the kind of computers or predictive models that we have today, which would have clearly foreseen the problems that we're experiencing with Social Security in 2017. Unless the money put into Social Security remains untouched, you end up shuffling that money around to pay for other things in government. And then you add surges in birth rates like the baby boom in the 1950s. And, well, you end up with an entitlement program that's financially unsustainable. There's no question that entitlements such as Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid and so on represent the biggest expenses when it comes to America's deficit spending. Defense spending doesn't even come close to these entitlements, folks. We are in a real pickle because these entitlement programs are mandated by law and people have now come to depend on them in order to survive. And health care is very similar to Social Security. We can see that the Affordable Care Act has produced many unforeseen consequences from state exchanges where there's only one insurance company to choose from and they have a monopoly to premiums which have doubled in some cases, never mind the fact that many hospitals and doctors are unable to get the reimbursements required to remain fiscally solvent. My point is that any time we address a complex problem like health care or Social Security, there are going to be unforeseen consequences. But today, and this is the good news, we have the benefit of highly accurate predictive analytics which can help us pinpoint the long-term repercussions of every decision, every option that is on the table. We have the tools to avert negative outcomes much further down the road, but we need time to use those tools, time to study the longer-term effects. We need national patience so our leaders can run through these scenarios and choose the best options for the long-term health of the nation. We need to resist the temptation to judge the new president on the basis of what he was able to get done in his first 100 days. Are you kidding me? (laughs) We need the president and the Congress to slow down their role and to make accuracy a more important priority than speed. Now, at this point, we've been talking about changes that are needed to improve health care. And we all want, we, we all want some kind of health care for those who cannot go out into the marketplace and individually get health care for themselves. And as you heard Sibelius talk about it, putting all of these people into a pool is like the group on of insurance. It allows them to negotiate as a group and get the same kind of advantages that uh, employers get when they're negotiating for their employees. We all, we can all agree that if there's a better way to do things, we have to leave ourselves open to it, regardless of the politics, regardless if you're a Democrat or a Republican. If there's a better way to ensure these folks, we need to all be in favor of it. We need to adapt. And speaking of adapting, here's another way we can adapt. If you have a job opening, well, you need to adapt also. We all know that posting your job in one spot isn't going to be enough to find quality candidates anymore. To find that perfect hire, you have to post your job on all the top job sites. You have to cover every single base, and now you can. With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post your job to 200-plus job sites, including social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, all with a single click. Find candidates in any city or industry nationwide. Just post the job opening once and watch your qualified candidates roll into ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use interface. No juggling emails or calls to your office. Quickly screen candidates. You can rate them. 
and hire the right person for the job fast. It's so easy to use. And it's what we at the Costa Report use to scour the planet for the best talented radio. I do not mind telling you that that is the reason we can deliver quality interviews like the one you heard today week after week after week. It's because we scour the nation Using ZipRecruiter, we post the job one time, it goes up on over 200 sites, and you cannot believe the tools that ZipRecruiter offers that will allow you to qualify those candidates very, very, very quickly. But you can use ZipRecruiter to fill any job, whether you're looking for an IT manager, a nurse, secretary, programmer, a sous chef, a truck driver, doesn't matter. Zip Recruiter Recruiter is the best way to find the best person for your job. Find out today why Zip Recruiter has been used by Fortune 100 companies as well as thousands of small and medium-sized businesses. And right now, for a short time only, listeners of this program can post jobs on Zip Recruiter for free. Won't cost you one penny by going to ziprecruiter.com/report. R-E-P-O-R-T, report. That's right, completely free. And everyone knows that if it's free, there's no downside. Give it a try. You got nothing to lose. So what are you waiting for? If you have a job opening, go to ziprecruiter.com slash report. One more time to try it for free. Zip Recruiter. That's Zip, Z-I-P, Recruiter, R-E-C-R-U-I-T-E-R dot com slash report. And uh, put put your job up there. Now I know you're thinking, well, you know, I have I just have one job, or I just have two or three jobs. Hey, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many jobs you have, and it doesn't matter what they pay. Try out Zip Recruiter and get your job opening up on 200 sites. And that just about wraps our first hour. If your station is leaving us after this hour, my guest next week is tax analyst Christopher Bergen will be here to dispel some of the biggest myths we have about taxes and offer some prudent advice on how we can all survive tax season. Don't miss Christopher Bergen right here on the only news program that puts policy ahead of politics. You're listening to the Costa Report. Hi, I'm Rebecca Costa from the Costa Report, and I want to recommend a website for you to check out. It's called We Don't Have to Be Sick.com. Staying well and living longer is something we all want, and We Don't Have to Be Sick.com offers a simple way to get you feeling your very best. That's because We Don't Have to Be Sick.com understands that our biggest health challenges fall under seven categories. Bone and joint, digestion, brain, heart, blood sugar, anti-aging, and weight loss. And when we give our bodies the 90 essential nutrients it needs, nutrients like minerals, vitamins, and amino acids, many of these challenges can be avoided. So take a moment to visit WeDon'tHaveToBeSick.com and check out their modular health packs. Then order one to try for yourself. And if you get the kind of results thousands of others have, sign up for the Auto Ship program, which automatically sends you a health pack every month without shipping charges. Again, the name of the website is WeDon'tHaveToBeSick.com. Recently on Good Morning Monterey Bay. Last night we had... We had pizza. We had pizza and we, you know, ate it out of the box. You, with paper plates, ladies and gentlemen. Rose, Rosie had um, had plates warmed up in the oven ready to go, you know, as is her style, you know, lovely dishware plates ready to warm. I was like, no, we just eat it out of the box. We just go. We don't wait. We just uh, <laughs> tuck in. We've got some paper plates and some napkins over there. It's all good. I did, I did acquiesce and have a knife and fork. Did. did you enjoy the pizza? I did, actually. I did. I mean, I couldn't eat as much of it as you ate, but I did enjoy it as a because it was the option was lamb with asparagus <laughs> or pizza. But being as how it was the last night, you know, it was like and you know okay. how I love asparagus. So. <laughs> I think any vegetable, actually, Donald, as the truth may be. Objection. <laughs> Overruled. <laughs> Don't miss Good Morning Monterey Bay weekdays 6 to 9 a.m. on KSEO. And listen anytime on the KSEO mobile app. For almost 70 years, we've been serving our community 
AM 1080 KSCO Santa Cruz.